Hey guys, my name is Eddie Joe, and this particular video is going to be for those of you who are either aspiring to be PAs or are currently in PA school, or for those of you who are looking for jobs right now in the ICU who are PAs. This video was uh, basically motivated, well, what motivated me to make this video was a PA student who asked me about getting a job in the ICU, and so here are the answers to your questions. First of all, my name is Eddie Joe. I'm a critical care physician and I would like to thank you for clicking on my video. And if you learn absolutely anything from my video, please click on the like button because that helps my channel grow. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Um, also, if you, know, you wanna help out the channel a little bit more, any purchases you make on Amazon, you can use the affiliate links listed below and that would actually help me make a little bit of money. Um, also, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. My handle is EddieJoeMD. So, to start off, if you're, going to, if you're going to go into PA school, this is a phenomenal, great, great career, and I applaud you for making the decisions to, you know, lead you to go into PA school. I definitely recommend it. I suggest you do it. I've trained many PA students in the past, both when I was a medicine resident as well as a fellow for critical care, and I had a lot of fun, a lot of fun in it. Um, a lot of brilliant people who I met and as a matter of fact one of my closest buddies is a, is a PA who I worked with when I was doing my, my fellowship and this guy basically taught me a lot a lot a lot because he had a lot of experience in, in the cardiothoracic ICU and he was all around a great guy I still text him almost every single day we text back and forth uh, memes are a great form of communication but I recall very vividly a bunch of times where patients got transferred to our unit who were not necessarily supposed to be there, but they were kind of overflow patients and we basically saved their asses. And it was a lot of fun just to be able to tag team, work together uh, really well. And as a PA, that's something you should aspire to do is basically work at the same level as a physician and you know be part of the team, okay? So moving along. Before you start PA school, well, what, yeah, even before you, you start PA school, if you want to go to ICU, to work in the ICU, you need to be aware of what comes with the job. First of all, there are a lot of nuances with it. You need to be aware that critical care is not a 9 to 5 job. Critical care is a 24 hour a day, 7 day a week job. What does that mean? That means that you're going to have to likely work nights and weekends. If you don't want to do nights and weekends, don't do critical care because that's not part of the job, okay? Um, the other thing is that depending on the practice you sign with, you may have to do outpatient pulmonary work. And if you don't want to do outpatient pulmonary work, then this may not be the career decision for you. The other thing is that you will have to come to terms with the fact that some of your patients will die on you. Uh, this is critical care and we take care of the sickest people who exist and therefore people will die because believe it or not, we're all going to die someday. So that's that. Also, if you make a mistake, that may cause somebody to die. That is a lot of responsibility. And so that's something you need to be able to live with because at the end of the day, no matter what anybody tells you, you are human and you will make mistakes. So keep that in mind. Now, during PA school, which is a very short period of time while you're in PA school, it's very, very concentrated you need to make sure to give every single rotation 100% of your energy and 100% of your commitment to it. Whether it's OBGYN, whether it's PEDS, whether it's internal medicine, whether it's surgery, no matter what your rotation is, you need to give it 100% of your dedication. Why? Because critical care encompasses everything. You need to be very diverse. I mean, I help orthopedic doctors take care of their patients. I help surgeons. I help cardiothoracic surgeons. I help everybody take care of their patients. And as a PA who's gonna be working by my side, I need you to do the same exact thing. Be able to take care of any patient who comes through that door without any qualms, okay? Be very well prepared. You do see all types of pathology. Now, there are some disadvantages that I need to be completely clear with you on. If you are a PA student or uh, somebody who's thinking about becoming a PA student or somebody who's coming out of PA school who's looking for a job in critical care. The biggest disadvantage is that you will have to be competing with nurse practitioners for these positions. Okay, And the reason why I say that this is a, this is a 
bad thing for you all. Um, I don't say that this is, you know, a deal breaker or something. But the reason why this is so difficult for you all is because a lot of people who are nurse practitioners going into critical care already have numerous years of experience at the bedside being critical care nurses. Okay, and these years of experience allow the critical care nurses to familiarize themselves with the medications, with the doses, with the patient population, with the ventilators, with the way that things work, and especially with the doctors. Okay, um, so I know that, and, and I don't mean this in a, in a weird way, but I would rather hire a nurse practitioner who was a bedside nurse who worked with me for several years over a PA student who I don't know who they are, where they came from, what their work ethic is, you know, all things, all things being equal. And that's just me being completely honest. I don't know if anybody else will tell you this, but this is something you need to hear, especially if you're going to be, you know, competing against nurse practitioners for these positions. Hope that doesn't hurt your feelings because it's the truth. That's, that's basically, that's basically it. So if you're gonna be competing against these nurse practitioners, who may have an inside, you know, an inside opportunity at getting these jobs, what are the things that you could do to make yourself more appetizing to us? And not that we're gonna eat you, That's, that was just a little bit weird. But when you are on your rotations as a PA student, you need to kick some serious butt. And what I mean by that is you need to be a force. You need to study harder than anybody else. You need to work harder. You need to stay longer hours. You need to come in on the weekends. You need to show your face. You need to have, most importantly, a great attitude. And what that means is don't, don't run off when, it's, you know, when things get heated. If there's a code, you need to go with, the, go with the doctor, go with the resident, go with everybody to the code and try to participate where you can. Okay. I know that's a little bit hard because that's, that's just the way it is. And, and you're already you know, kind of stretched thin all together in PA school, but you really need to show your talent, you need to show your worth, and there's gonna be nothing better than, than just being there. Being there, being aggressive, being ambitious. That's what's gonna help you out the most, okay? Now, with regards to getting a job as well, you need to, first of all, figure out kind of where you wanna live, and Sometimes this is a big city, sometimes this is smaller towns, etc. You need to figure out if you want to do critical care, if they even hire PAs where you're looking to work. Because if they don't hire PAs, then you might not have a job even to begin with, okay? You need to reach out to those facilities, talk to the staff of the ICU, talk to the medical directors, talk to whoever you can to figure out, you know, what, if, if there's even a possibility for you to have a job there. Now, this is a lot of legwork, I understand that, but if this is your dream, these are the things you need to go ahead and do. I mean, the, the job is just not gonna be offered to you because there's a, there are a lot of people who are competing for these particular jobs. And, you know, if, if for example, this practice doesn't have uh, PAs who work under them, you can say like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna go, can I go shadow you? For a while and I know that this is free labor but this free labor may be what convinces those physicians and that physician group to hire you because they know you're gonna be a valuable asset okay um, a lot of times you know this is what it takes now once you get that job that's when the real world experience begins you're gonna realize that you don't know anything and I'm not, I don't mean that in a negative way because when I started my first day of residency it's kind of like I was drinking water through a through a fire hydrant just trying to stay alive and that happens to PA students that happens to medical students when they transition to residency hey it even happened to me in to a certain degree when I was a medicine resident transitioning into my fellowship that they threw me into a cardiac cardiothoracic surgery ward to basically start off my fellowship and I was looking around and I had never taken care of these patients before. I didn't understand the physiology of them. And, you know, it's kind of sink or swim, but you're going to swim because that's, that's what you've been trained to do. And just focus on being better every single day. Don't ever settle. If you want to be a PA who practices in the ICU, go get it. You can do it. Please hit me up if you need any further information. 
Thank you for watching this video and I hope you have a great day and I hope you learned something from all this. Thanks a lot. Bye.